So at this point, you're probably familiar with one and two dimensional space. So one dimensional space being a number line, such as the x axis, because to specify any point on this line, we only need one coordinate. So one dimensional space is also referred to as a one, the one meaning that every point in the space has one coordinate and the uh meaning that the coordinates are real numbers. And then so uh two is the coordinate plane with the x and y axes because to specify a point we need two coordinates, the x and y coordinates. And so these are both special cases of what we call a uh, n, which is the space where every point needs n coordinates to specify it. So if you were to write out a point, it would look like this, x1, x2, all the way to xn, whatever n is. And we just use subscripts on the x because, well, you'd run out of letters if the n was big enough. So in multivariable calculus, we're going to be dealing a lot with a3, which is three-dimensional space determined by the x, y, and z axes. So each point in this space requires three coordinates, the x, y, and z coordinates. So this is how it's usually drawn. So you can see that the z coordinate is basically the height of the point above the x, y plane. A lot of times we're going to be interested in something called the projection of an object, so, for example, the projection of this point onto the xy plane, you can think of it as the shadow of the point onto the xy plane. It's where the point would be if it didn't have a z coordinate. And also, this three dimensional space is split up into eight octants, just like how the coordinate plane is split into four quadrants. And so, the first octant is this one that's, that's closest to us right now, where all of the, the x, y, and z coordinates are all positive. So a point is a single location in space, which we specify with the coordinates. And then a vector, a vector also has sort of coordinates, but it represents a displacement in space. So these two points here, if we wanted to go from one point to the other, then that would be a vector because it's a displacement. And so a vector has a magnitude and direction. So a vector has coordinates just like a point. This just means the displacement represented by the vector is x units in the x direction, y units in the y direction, and z units in the z direction. And sometimes we use these special pointy brackets for vectors, but not always. We can just use the regular brackets like we do for points. Sometimes it's easy to get them confused. And so the magnitude of a vector is given by the Pythagorean theorem. It's just the square root of the sum of all the squares of the components. And since a vector is defined by its magnitude and direction, if two vectors have the same magnitude and direction, even if they don't start at the same point, then they are considered basically the same vector. So all of these vectors here are the same because they have the same magnitude and direction. They just don't start at the same place. And so one of the important operations for vectors is vector addition. Now this is one of the operations that defines what a vector is. So if we have two vectors, then we can add the vectors to get a new vector, and the components of this new vector will just be the sum of the corresponding components of the original vectors. And geometrically, to add two vectors, you know, you just put b, the second one, at the end of the first one, and then you draw a new vector from the original starting point to the end of the second vector. 
and then subtracting vectors work the same way because you're just adding the negative. And so geometrically, you can see that if we have a vector b and then we add the difference a minus b, then that just gets a. So then you can think of a minus b as the vector that you need to add to b in order to get a. So in other words, if you line up a and b tail to tail, and you draw the vector from the head of b to the head of a, then that's going to be a minus b. So the difference of vectors is the vector that points from the second one to the first one. And then the other operation that defines vectors is scalar multiplication. So if we have a scalar c times a vector a, then all we do to get this vector is multiply all of the components of a by their scalar. If the scalar is positive, it doesn't change the direction of the vector, it only changes the magnitude. And then if c is a negative number, it switches the direction of the vector. So notice that any point can be represented by a vector that starts at the origin that has the same coordinates. And say we have some point x, y, and then we have a vector x, y, that vector is just an arrow from the origin to that point. So we call this a position vector of the point P, and so the point is represented by the vector, its position vector, studying at the origin. So you're going to see that sometimes, instead of referring to points, we refer to their position vectors. And so this further you know, confuses the boundary between points and vectors. When we have vectors studying at the origin, we say that they are in standard position. So lastly, we have these things called unit vectors, which are just a vector with a magnitude of 1. So if we have some random vector v, and we want to make v into a unit vector in the same direction, then all we do is divide each component of v by its magnitude. And you can easily check that the magnitude of this new vector is going to be 1. And it still points in the same direction. There are some special unit vectors called the standard basis vectors. And so in any space uh, n, any vector in that space can be written as a combination of the n standard basis vectors, which are represented by an E and a subscript. So in a three, three-dimensional space, we have three standard basis vectors. They point in the x, y, and z directions. And they're most commonly referred to as i, j, and k. i goes in the x direction, j in the y direction, and k in the z direction. So any vector, so say this vector here, 2, 3, 5, it can be written in terms of these three standard basis vectors as 2i plus 3j plus 5k. i, j, and k correspond to e1, e2, and e3. They are different names for the same thing. And the reason we set to use these e's is because if we go into higher dimensions, then we're going to run out of letters pretty soon.